Hello, YouTube. We're going to be taking off our front hubs on a A20. These hubs are pretty common. It's about any John Deere, whether it be a wide front or a tricycle. Packing bearing. We'll probably won't be repacking it today, but we'll be going through and examining them and uh, show you how to get it off. And to decide whether or not you really you can do bearings or not. One easy way is to do play in here. If there's not much play, then oh. But you'll really know when you get into the bearings. Any problems that need to be repacked anyway, something needs to be done, it's part of restoration. And after I do it, it'll probably be the last time it ever gets done again for who knows how long. So, let's take it apart and we'll make some assessments. And I do hear a little bit of bearing noise. So we probably need some bearings. We're only going to do one on one side because. After you see one, you'll be able to do two, no problem. So, get rid of the link, which is just basically the opposite of what we're doing. So, disassembly, you should be able to tell you how to get it apart, how to make the sense of the bearings, whether you need ones or not. And you just put it back the way it took apart. So, let's take this apart. wrench. This is our half inch. So you can get a ratchet wrench in there. It's really, really nice. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can, if you don't have can. Let's just get a half inch uh, deep socket. that works and it doesn't slapping the wrench real hard. Sometimes it'll knock it loose pretty easy for you. But it doesn't always work. Ah blue pookie. Immediately tells me that somebody has been in before. stuff. Basically, let's just do enough to get by and ship it down the road type of deal. 
get rid of some of this grease. This is really old grease. This is not the way to do this. Make a gasket. Put one, put one in there like you're supposed to. Excuse the term, don't have to, you know, do the job. And we got quite a bit of sludge in here. And yes, I'm just reaching into the trash can with a little paper towel. Because why waste it? Because for other things, they're not good enough to do other stuff, but definitely good enough to uh, do this. Now, I don't know if you guys know this with cutter keys, but cutter keys are so much easier to get out for the pair of nights than the pair of needles. It allows you to grab them. a new cutter key anyway, or at least it should be. And it makes it so much easier to grab the cutter key. Find it hard, not grab it. That is so much easier to sit here with the pair of needle nose to do this. Sure, you know. I'm 
get as much of this grease out of here as we can. And it shouldn't be so runny, it should be a lot thicker than this. Alright, here we go. I'll probably show you how to get the races out. Let me clean this up and I'll show you how to get the races out of this thing. Uh, for okay, guys. Um, okay, we can see in there. Here is your. Uh, this is what holds your dust cover. This this whole thing right here is what holds your dust packets to go in here to keep. Uh, sand, dust, and whatever from getting into this bearing. And inside of here, there are grooves. I'm having a hard time showing you. There are grooves in here. There they are. See that groove? Right down in there? See that groove? Those grooves are for you to stick a punch into and hit on. You stick your punch in there. These grooves are for you to stick your punch, as you can see, right in there, and you'd hammer on that. And they're on each side for upper and lower. Then you'll pound out your race. Now, up here, you're not going to want to try to get this out first. The way to do that without damaging this, so you don't have to buy one. Remember, if you mess this up, you have to buy one. The way to get that out without damaging it, and the bearing is still in there. But the way to do this is look for those same grooves, right? There's them grooves, and pound this out on each side, and that'll knock this race, these are the same race down here. It'll take the bearing, the race, and everything at one time, and should, should not damage this. Although I do see some indentions in there and I don't know why that's there but so let me get you set up on the bipod guys and you can watch me do this. Okay guys here we are. Now you know, I've got the wings set up the little indentions here and this way because if you hammer over here it's not going to set real well on the vise. You don't want to put a ton of pressure on this cast iron and that in such a fact. You can probably be all right, but when you do this, you want some backing here and some backing over here, which we have this. We have this. We hammer. We have strength. It happens a whole lot easier. You don't have bounce, and the force from the hammering goes directly to move out the ring. I mean, the the bearing, the race, and the dust cover holder. So here's the pain in the butt part. Bam. And you work from side to side. Hit the race, not the bearing. And you go from side to side. Now some of these will be a lot easier than others, and some of these will be harder.
Are we coming? We're not moving a whole lot yet, but we are moving. Try not to hit the bearings. Only the race in there. Because if the bearing's good, you don't want to uh, ruin that. You know, for sure buying a bearing. But in this application, I think you're probably getting your bearings. Whew. We're down closer. We're still not getting it. See the weight of this hammer? We're going to move up. Getting close. We may not be able to get the dust seal out without some damage, but maybe we can get lucky. And be able to flatten it back out. Be able to use it. Again. It is vitally important that you hit the race, not the bearing. Brace, not bearing. Do not make this too tight on you. This is, you know, a cone shape. You can put stress on this and break it. How do I know? When I was younger, doing my own things and my own tractors, I've broken it. I know better now. Well, we're getting there. Slow process, but it is, it's coming along. Better. Got the dust cover and we've got the bearing. So, uh, there we go. Uh, bearing, dust cover. We should be able to straighten this and still be able to use it. There's no reason we can't. It looks really good to me. Pooch it back down. We're in good shape. But we have to continue getting the race out. And the race is what the bearing rides it. 
Almost there with that too. Got it. Ah. There's the race, guys. Just flip it around. Let's get the other side out. Same thing on this side. There'll be two little ears in there or, or indentions, wings or whatever, however you want to call it. But there's an indention where a punch can go and you can get this out. Now I'd like to add that uh, if you have an older truck or, you know, like a three-quarter ton and some eh, half tons and stuff, doesn't matter what model it is, most of these are done the same way. Now you buy the whole hub for the newer vehicles, but older vehicles, this is pretty much the same procedure. Not much different. Can you use a press to do this? Yes. If you don't have a press and you've got something hollow you can sit this in or a vise, you can do this in your backyard. You do not have to have a lot of money or a lot of fancy stuff change wheel bearings in older vehicles or tractors. We just don't, guys. We just don't. Some, but we're almost out though. We're not, not much to, to go. We're out. Ugh. Here's the other race. Let me clean this stuff up. And I'll show you how to decide if. Uh, if you actually would like to have uh, new bearings or not, or you think you should. All right, first thing you want to do is inspect your spindle. Make sure that there's it's not real pitted or not too tore up or no big gouges and you don't have any of that and it's not real bad and if you do take your file file it off you'll be fine I want to check that first and this spindle feels good looks good to me definitely work <coughs> now we come back over here to the races and the bearings Well, to me, these look like the original races and the original bearings. And I do see wear. I can tell they're wear, they're worn. You know, they're a little sloppy. They got some wear. You know, but they're not horrible. They're truly not. You could very well go back with these if you wanted to. They would go for a very long time. But we may replace them. But you could go with these. We tend to do above and beyond. We most likely will replace them. But I'm just telling uh, anyone at home that's doing this. If you have this amount of wear and there's no pitting. And this seems to be okay. <clears throat> that uh, you're no uh, wear for the worse. Excuse me. Wrong one. You're no wear for the worse. It'll... Uh, You'll be okay. I mean, you can, you can roll a long time with it like this and be just fine. But they are worn. Could they use a new set? Uh, sure. They're, that's a play. You know, they got a little more play than I like. But for you at home, this one is fine. Uh, this one's even better, I feel. But they are worn. But they're worn evenly. There's no gouges. So... You could use this. You could go right back with these and be just fine. 
Uh, if you didn't see the grease that was in here before, um, this is definitely kind of the wrong consistency. A lot of people will put any kind of grease inside of bearings, but grease breaks down at a certain temperature. So if this thing's rolling down the, the parade avenue or, you know, you're actually wanting to do a little farming, you know, weekend farming with the with your with your antique tractor, it's probably not good. You need a bearing grease, a thicker grease that's designed for bearing and high temperature. It'll keep your bearings from wearing, or if you have worn bearings, uh, make them go a lot longer. And we're real good in here. See, there's those notches that I was talking about. There are those notches. That's how you get them out. Now, when you put this back together, don't try to put this together. Don't try to put this together with this. Uh, remember, this needs to go in first, and then the rest of it. Okay? This, this, tap them back in the way they're supposed to be, right? And then put this in. Then you'll be golden. And uh, definitely do the back side first. Uh, what else can I show you? See the indention right here from popping it out? Well, I know a pretty easy way to fix that. It's not damaged. We will take a old bearing that I have. And we will set that in there like so. somewhat centered. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just tapping it back in. You probably don't even have to do this right now. You probably actually do it when you put it in. See, we're already starting to go back. And why am I using this? Do I have something to make this easier? Yes, I do. I have something to make this a whole lot easier way to do this. But I'm trying to help you guys be able to do it at home with what you have. Because it's not that tough. You can just take the socket too. I have tools just for this. But I'm trying to help you guys at home. You may not have these tools. Say, so, hey, you don't need them. You can actually do it with a big socket or find something that size and you'll be able to tap it down and be just fine. It's just a dust seal. Once you get it down so far, you can actually go in with a hammer. Get something flat, make it a little bit better. Uh, I think I'm actually going to use a body hammer. Something flat. I'm also a body man. Find you a nice flat hammer. I actually have a tool that's just for this, but to be honest with you, this is fine. It's just a dust seal. If this is all you had, something flat to, uh, if all you had was something flat to do this, I was over there on my, uh, over there on my uh, vice, but something that's steel. Just a flat hammer that you can hit with another hammer. 
you know, get it somewhat down like we had it with something that's that size. And just work your way around. And you're golden. And you're really good because that's all this does is uh, hold in the dust seal that goes inside of here. We'll move you back to where that's at. And I am filming all this myself, so please be patient with me. Hope and editing should uh, slow this down or make or speak speedy. This, this actually takes a lot longer than what you than what it looks like on the finished version of the film, but uh, oh, it takes a lot longer. Uh, but anyway, here we're good. It'll hold. It'll work. We can go right back in with it. Dust seal's fine. You don't need to buy one. Just as good as what you had. You're in great shape. Save yourself a dollar. Well, this is a. Uh, well, that's it on how to uh, take apart a set of hubs on a John Deere tractor. Uh, at least one hub. That's what you're looking for. Uh, you know how to what you're looking for in your bearings. You know scores, races, burrs, anything. Uh, you know what'll work, what won't work. I would advise anything any looser than this. Do not, you know, get new ones. But if this is all you got, this would work for a long time. They're not horrible. Uh, something like this, which is out of a, is out of a bearing, which is if if we were seeing this, these real bad pits. Like out of this bearing, uh, no way, no way, no. Do not use this. Throw this bearing away. I, <laughs> I just happen to keep this bearing around to do what I just did with it. And, but uh, anyway, yeah, if they look like that, throw them away. If they look like this, still usable. And it's really up to you. It'll work, but new ones would make it even better. So uh, I thank you. I hope this helps you. I hope this. Uh, with your project and you're able to take something away from this and uh, make things a little easier in your own life. Thanks again. Restoration guy, I'll be back when uh, I got something else to show you. Bye.